we're going to get started. Thank you guys for your patience. Thank you, each and every one that's here. Uh, we're going to jump right in uh, to our session. So first of all, just welcome, welcome to everybody that's here. Uh, it's so good to see so many familiar faces and some new faces as well. Uh, real quick, I just want to welcome everybody to the band approach. Uh, we have a lot of uh, fun and exciting things ahead. We have some great people in the room, some great musicians. Uh, we're going to get them all introduced. Um, they're excited. They're ready to go. Um, but just really quickly, I wanted to take just a second out just to tell folks a little bit about Soundcheck. I know some people might, this might be your first time uh, coming to one of our programs or interacting with us. So just a quick uh, rundown, just a quick hello on who we are and what we do. So my name is Joel. I'm a husband. I'm a dad. I'm a guitarist. And I'm the founder and the executive director of Soundcheck Youth Arts. We are a nonprofit organization. We were founded in uh, 2013. And what we do is we help young people improve their sound, not only as musicians, but as leaders in their community. So our programs focus on two aspects. We have a community aspect uh, that's directly related to, again, not necessarily musicians per se, uh, but just that whole community development aspect. And then on the other hand, we have programs that uh, focus on professional and artistic development. And so that's what you're taking part or will be taking part in today. Uh, so we are a for, uh, a for youth by youth musicians incubator. We've been developing and nurturing uh, the talent of young aspiring musicians since inception. Uh, what we do is we provide young people with a safe space to explore their musical creativity and their artistic identities. Um, over the years, we've served hundreds of youth from all over the GTA. Our mission is to help youth facing barriers uh, have opportunities to develop musical proficiency, positive identities, and leadership skills within a, a safe learning environment through musical instruction. So again, music being sort of both our means and our ends. Uh, for anyone that knows the name Soundcheck, what that actually means, uh, just like as we did this morning and, and, and continue to do, uh, just getting our levels right, making sure our, our sound is, is right, uh, we actually take that and use that as a model to teach life skills. And so it goes far beyond music, whether it's in, in, in folks' education, in, in, in career, um, et cetera. We take that idea of sound checking and apply it uh, beyond music. And so uh, we started really humbly. Like, um, actually, some of the people that are in the room probably remember this. Some of the band members we're about to meet. Uh, we actually started in 2013, as I mentioned. Up on the screen, there is a picture of the church where we began. So uh, we began in the Weston Mount Dennis community. Anybody that knows that area, um, I actually went to Weston Collegiate, so a community dear, near and dear to my heart. And uh, we happened to be right every week. We would offer a, a mentorship program, a music program, where we'd open up our space, have the community come in. They would learn how to play keyboards, drums, bass, and guitars. We'd have mentors there. And it was a really phenomenal, awesome, awesome experience. We did that for a number of years um, until in 2018, thanks to the support of our wonderful uh, uh, fun funder and sponsor, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, uh, they actually uh, helped us to uh, open the very first or our very first, Toronto's very first uh, youth-led musician community center. And that's actually where this program is being shot and broadcasted from uh, today. And so, uh, you know, we've had to transition, uh, COVID hit, all kinds of things have been going on, but we've been doing a lot of these kinds of programs online. And it's just really awesome to be here doing this work. So if you like, if you were here on Monday, uh, you enjoyed that session, or maybe you've tuned in. I've seen, I've seen some familiar faces. Uh, if you've been following us, Definitely hit us up, uh, follow us on our on our social media uh, to stay up to date in terms of what we have going on. But uh, I've I think I've talked enough. I think I've said enough. I want to really introduce us. I know we're all here. I'm excited to hear the band. Uh, but before they play, let's let's just get a chance to meet who we have in the room today. So firstly, we'll we'll introduce the band. Uh, and and we'll we'll get right going. So on organ today, uh, we actually have our very own Daniel Cohen's that's in the room. Daniel, say hello to the people. What's going on? 
I think you got a mic right over there. There we go. <laughs> oh, Daniel, yeah, what's up? Nothing much. How are you? We're. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's good to have you, man. It's your first time here, no? Yep, first time. Awesome, awesome. Nervous? A little bit. Oh man. You, you do this all the time, I'm sure. Uh, we have on drums right now, Adrian's in the house. Adrian, what's going on, brother? Talk to the people. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Adrian, what's good? How, how you been? How, how, how's everything? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Are you excited? I, actually, I'm wondering, are you nervous? Do you get nervous still at this God, no, I'm pretty much dead inside, to be honest, so I don't, I don't really feel much. Yeah. For real, for real. At least you're answering honestly, right? Uh, we got D, Wade, and Joseph. Oh, that's not them. We got D, Wade, and Joseph in the house. Uh, D, Wade, what's up, bro? Not much, brother. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I see you brought the bass with you. I just wanted a tool, an extra tool. That's all. Uh, <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. And Joseph, uh, playing the instrument of champions, our guitar player tonight. Oh, who cares? <laughs> yeah, man. Joseph, what's going on, brother? Not much, man. Not good, much. Good to see you. Good to see you. And and last but certain, certainly not least, we have in the house uh, Jermaine. I guess he's our MD for today. Is that right, Jermaine? Um, yeah, I just showed up and the band was here. So, <laughs> okay. So, so, hey, take it over. Awesome, Jermaine. What's going on, though? You all right? I'm here, man. You know? Awesome, awesome, man, awesome. Here, you know? Awesome, awesome. Glad to hear. So the band is here. Um, uh, we got folks in the room, which is awesome. Uh, the band's just going to do what they do best. They're going to open us up and just sort of set the tone for us. Um, are you guys tired of hearing me talk? Are you guys ready to hear some music? <laughs> I heard someone was like, yeah, man. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So the band is getting ready to do what they do best. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to get out of the way. Well, you'll see me back in a few minutes. But let's let's hear the band play. And yeah, man, I, I see someone in the group chat. We got greatness in the house today. That's right. Greatness is in the house. Uh, so anyway, let me get out of the way. And let's hear the band play. All right, so before we start, um, I noticed that on Monday we didn't really give you guys a chance to know what songs we're playing. Um, so tonight we'll be doing a song from one of our very own groups here, Brian Hamilton and Divine Worship, called Fresh Anointing.
Did y'all hear that? Hey, did you guys hear what I heard just now? Okay, okay, okay. The comments are coming in in the group chat. Oh, wow. Fire. Claps. Hands up. Worship. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. No, this is, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Uh, so y'all y'all heard it for yourself. Um, we're we're going to get right out of the way. Today is all about the band, playing as a band, playing as a band, and, and understanding how to approach as a band. And so, actually, what one of the things we're going to start off right right off the bat, uh, we just heard an amazing, amazing performance. And I want each uh, performer that we have, each musician that we have, just to talk a little bit. For some folks weren't here in session one. So what we covered, one of the things we covered was the role of each instrument in the band. And so uh, we can you can also speak a little bit about that performance and also how you approached it as far as your role. So to start things off, we're actually going to get uh, Jermaine to just kind of kickstart things for us. Uh, he's going to break the ice. And so Jermaine, talk to, talk to us a little bit, right? Um, what, what, what sort of goes into, you're playing keys tonight. First of all, that's very different than what you were playing yes, on Monday. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit. How are you approaching playing keys as opposed to playing organ? Well, it's well, yeah, well, it's kind of similar to what I was speaking of, um, speaking about on Monday. Uh, when I'm playing organ, I'm I'm a bit, I'm padding a bit more. Okay. Um, in terms of just more so holding chords, whereas with my approach to keys, um, especially depending on the genre, right? But there's more of this going on. Where like, if, especially because it's rock, right? I as much as I have a guitar player. I try to emulate that sound, which like you hear the ah uh, right, right, right. right. Well, obviously, from uh, playing chords aspect in terms of on the keyboard, right? Right. Um, so, but I also, depending on the genre, as I said, it you don't want to a genre like this. You don't want to be too all, all over the place. Like you don't want to be um, Art Tatum meets um, Hillsong. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. So as right. much as I can play more, um, this song doesn't require that. Right, right, it's right. Literally, right. like, fresh anointing, fall on me. Right, right. That's all it needs. It doesn't need to fresh anointing. Fall. It doesn't need all that. Right, right, so right. Again, my approach has to change in order for it to fit within the confines of this genre. Got right? you, got you. So, got you. as I said, padding versus um, being a bit more, I don't know, syncop syncopated. In a right, sense, for lack of a better word. So right, that's kind of how I look at it. Right. So, G, I, I realized that some people might have missed the whole introduction on sort of your musical journey and what got you into playing and all of that. Let's let's circle back a little bit uh, just for the sake of the folks that are joining tonight okay. that weren't actually here on Monday. Uh, well, I mean, simply put, I, I, um, I was a drummer first, um, uh, but well, it was one of those things where it's like as much as I could play drums, it wasn't necessarily... Well, first of all, I wasn't rated. <laughs> uh, I wasn't rated. Because back in the day, like, it was a bit more cutthroat, which I totally appreciate. Because I think if I, if, if they wasn't like that, then I don't think I would be where I am now. Okay. In terms of being in your rightful place. Right. Um. So, um, and so being at home, especially um, not having a drum set at home, you know, you get bored after a while playing on, like, you know, books and your your thighs, your hi-hat. Right. Everything. I don't know what any, any, anybody, else, anybody else is on. Um, Story was so yeah. In a nutshell, got bored of that, and my dad actually bought an organ for my brother for him right. to learn. But he, my brother is like a choir director, singer, so that wasn't really his thing. So gotcha. one day I just got bored and I just started playing on the organ, and the rest was history. Wow. Um, to be honest, and then it kind of, kind of just evolved from there, man. And so, would you say you're actually an organ player first? Like oh, most definitely. Okay. Like okay. keyboard, what when I was growing up, like, it was <laughs> my church was an organ church. Okay, literally. gotcha. Even now, like if you play organ at my church, or no, if you if there's no organ at my church and it's just keys, it just sounds weird. Got you. Because it's the culture. Got there, you. So, got yeah. you. Got you. Mm -hmm. Thank Thank you so much. Uh, so moving on, we're actually going to get uh, Daniel to talk to us a little bit. Uh, so Daniel, what's going on? Let's <laughs> no, yeah, you Daniel, yeah. <laughs> So Daniel, talk we were, to. I thought we were going in a, you know. Oh, talk, it's, hey, it's all right. talk to us a little bit, Daniel, and tell us. Uh, well, first of all, 
you know, what what's your musical journey like? You're playing organ today. Uh, did you always play organ? Is that something you just picked up today? Like, how how did it all happen? How did it all <laughs> happen? Um, I probably started out when I was, uh, I guess, in any official capacity, when maybe like twelve. Okay. Kind of musicians left the church. It was a whole family of them, and I was just like, all right, we need somebody to <laughs> right, play. Right. And right. so it's this guy that knows like two chords. Ah. Okay. And, um, like the one and the five. One and a five, a little bit of four. And, okay, and little it, bit. You know, it gets messy. It gets messy after there. But <laughs> okay. It was just kind of. It was just kind of. It was kind of one of those things where I learned notes way after I learned chords. Got you. Got you. Like it just, the whole process just didn't make sense. Got you. But um, but yeah, it started out on keyboards, but you know, playing keyboard organ like like um Jermaine said, my church is organ driven, so um. I just had to try and make that work until, you know, we actually got one. Got you, got you, got you. And, I mean, you're sitting on the organ right now. Can you just, can you give us some? Can you play a little organ for us? Oh, well, okay. (laughs) Yeah, sure. What what do you, what do you want me to play? Play, uh, play, play what's on your mind. Take my hand. Do we have this PayPal um, on deck? (laughs) That was worth it. Wow. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, Moving right along, um, we are going to introduce, we have on drums right now, uh, none other than Adrian. Adrian, what's going on, brother? How you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're hearing you, man. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. How you feeling? How you feeling around that kit? You, you look a little bit tight around there. Is you all right? I'm just a massive human being, to be honest. So like, <laughs> everything kind of looks tight, and I'm like kind of lazy. So I make sure everything is within close proximity, even though I have extremely long arms. Got you, got you, got you. That's what's up. Uh, and so, I mean, talk to us, Agent. You you've been playing music for a while. Um, what, talk to us a little bit about your experience and tell us how you got into it for the folks that weren't here on session one. Mm. How did I get into it? <laughs> Head super shiny, eh? <laughs> How did I get into it? Uh, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, it's just something I'm always supposed to be doing. Uh, my parents said when I was younger, um, instead of playing with Barbie dolls, I'd rip the the legs off the Barbie dolls and I'd use them as drumsticks from when I was like two. Um, I kind of had the same bratopsy, sorry. <laughs> like kind of like Jermaine where, yo, down. guys were... that down for the people that know, brought, know. Okay. Um, I was kind of brought up the same way that Jermaine was um, where the older generation that I played around was really tough. So I was kicked off with drums a lot when I was younger. Um, but I was just persistent with it and kept going right. with it. I remember if I didn't get a chance to play... I would cry 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like for real, like big like tears. crocodile tears. Wow, like for real. Five years old in yeah, I was like five, but yeah, five yeah, yeah. years old, just screaming. So, um, mm-hmm. all right. But yeah, um, as I got older, I grew out of that. <laughs> thank God, and awesome. yeah, it's just something I've always been doing. Awesome. No, that's great. Thank you so much for that introduction. Mm. Um, and you know what, Adrian, before you put that mic away, uh, why don't you just give us a, give us a little something. Say hello on the drums for us. Oh, I was gonna, but I have to put the mic away. Well, yeah, put the mic. <laughs> <laughs> for, um, what, what? Cover your ears, please. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just, uh, just, just short and sweet. Thank, thank you, Adrian. That was wonderful. Uh, so we're going over now to, uh, we're going to Wade and Joseph. And actually, Wade, why don't you start things off? Talk to the people a little bit. Introduce yourself again. Uh, so you're playing bass. Is that a six string? Is, what am I seeing here? Is yeah, it that's six? a six string. What? Okay. Do you always play with a six string uh, way? No, or? I have a five. I have oh. a four. Okay, okay. Yeah. So talk talk to us a little bit about that. What made what made you make the decision to bring that bass today? Um, well, to be honest, um all my other bases are out of commission right now. Oh, so. for real? <laughs> it was one of those. Okay. Uh, they need to get set up. They need strings. They need to be fresh. So this one was kind of available. Okay, you know got I mean? you, got yeah. you. And, and 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 wait, you've been playing music for a while. Like how how did, I don't even think I know. How did you get into music? When did you start? Oh, like gosh. what's your journey? We're talking about years. Um, yeah, just like any regular musician, you know, start off playing drums. Okay. Started playing drums when I was like two years old. Really? And then um five, my dad bought me a a bass. Right. And only because the guy in the church wasn't playing it right. So he's like, you know, <laughs> I got to have to train up the youth, you know. <laughs> but then over over time, I noticed that my, my younger brother was coming up and he was starting to get a lot better playing drums than me. So I just like, you know, right. what? give him, let him play the drums. I'll switch over to the bass. So. Gotcha. And ever since that, it's just been number one thing. For real, for real. Yeah. No turning back. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. Thank, thanks for sharing that, Wade. That's awesome. No problem. And we're going to go right over to uh, Joseph. Joseph, what's going on, brother? Not much. <laughs> all right. All right. Good to have you, man. How you been? Man, not bad. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Day two, day two. So talk to us, Joseph. How did you get into guitar? First of all, you chose the right instrument, obviously, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I don't really know. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> It was, I think, it was just something like when I turned 11 or 12 or 13, it was kind of like guitar, go do guitar. Okay. And before that, like I grew up in a musical household and we were banging pots and pans and records were playing all the time. So, right. um, no, play a little piano, play a little cello, kind of weird. Um, okay, yeah. And then at like 12 or 13, I went guitar. Okay. That's That was it. There was yeah. no looking back after that. Nice, nice, nice. And I see you got your guitar here. I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I kind of do. Can you play a little guitar for me? I, w I want to hear some guitar right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. That's awesome, man. I how did I know how did I know you were okay. Joseph, how did I know you were going to the Kia E? I had a feel <laughs> I had a feeling. When in doubt, man. When in doubt. I hear you, man. No, this sounds, this sounds great. Thank you. Uh and now we are going over to actually, I think we got Do we get everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. All right. Thank thanks. Thanks, crew. Thanks. We're good. Uh so uh, we have a couple of questions. The band's getting ready to play again, um, but I know folks had had a chance to uh, you know meet the band. 
Uh, we just want to know if, if folks have any time right now for, we have time for about one question real quick. Uh, does anyone have a specific question that they want to hear? Oh, we want to hear something from Wade. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Wade. <laughs> That's a very, very good point. We didn't hear anything from Wade. So let's get over. Let's get back. Let's get that camera back over to Wade. And let's see. Let's hear something from Wade. Thank thank you, guys. Sorry, bass. All the bass players in the room. Yes, sir. So, so you know what? I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the band to work a little bit. Wait, you see that groove that you just dropped? Yeah, you you remember it? <laughs> you remember that groove you just dropped, Wade? Yeah. Yeah, man. Because it's all about playing in a band, right? So this is guys. This is completely spontaneous. This has not been rehearsed. This has not been done before. This is completely spontaneous. Uh. You know, we're we're learning about playing in a band. So I want wait wait run that run that bass line one more time for us. Let's hear that back. Let's get the drums. Let's let's get the drums to come in. Right, guys that's that that that's completely spontaneous that's on the fly i don't know how that sounded on your end but on my end that sounded pretty sweet so man we got to get you guys to break this down right i know i noticed that that wade kind of had the foundation and so wade why don't you talk a little bit about that and how you approach that a little bit well um that's one thing about um, being a musician. Whatever instrument you play, you have to understand your instrument and the uh, the role it plays. Mm. So, um, me as a bass man, <laughs> I have to lock with the drummer, regardless what the situation is. Me and the drummer have to be locked together. Right. Um, the keys, you know, guitar, organ, they can do whatever they want, but the music's not the same if the bass and the drum is not locking. So. It's simple for a bass to create a groove is very simple as a bass player. Just you have to set a good foundation of a groove. Right. 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 
And it's something that is easy to lock with a drummer. Right, right, right. right, right and then everything just comes on, comes on top of that. And yeah, it yeah, just yeah. rides it. Once we fall off, then the whole groove just... Right, you know? right. And I noticed you were so disciplined, like, during that whole groove that you guys just all did. Like, yeah. you didn't move. Yeah. Like, yeah. you literally, you held down that bass line and you, like, you looped it and looped yeah. it and looped it and looped it and Absolutely. looped it. And you just stayed Absolutely. right there. Absolutely. So so talk about that. Is that, again, is that just that role that you mentioned, that it's, foundation? It's, it's more discipline. Um, Like, I, I grew up. You know, playing a lot of reggae music. Oh, okay. Right? So that, hold on, you you're gonna have to play something. No, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> <laughs> right, like that right there was my foundation. Okay, got you. Right. Tell yeah. me what you want me to play the reggae music. <laughs> let's let's get let's get this thought, and then you can you can you can give us a little something. Whatever roof. So, so this is what you grew up on. Like, this is oh, what's yeah, in you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to hear, I got to hear this. This, this. this is my bread and butter right here. <laughs> All right, I got to hear this. Major 17? Yeah. One. Yes, sir. That is reggae. That is reggae. So my whole thing is once, like, as reggae bass, you see how it feels good? Yeah. That's right. That's the groove right there. You right. don't want to come off of that. After that, it's just like, okay, come back. I want right. to feel that. Your body's right. craving for that. Right, 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 right. right. So that's, how, that's how I approach everything. No, that's awesome, man. Thank you for that, Wade. That's, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Uh, so let's go over to... So hang on, y'all. We're just getting the switching right. So let's go over to... Thanks for talking to us about that way. That's awesome. Uh, let's go over to um, Adrian. So Adrian, talk to us a little bit about the band and how your role in the band and how you approach your role in the band. Talk to the people a little bit so we understand. So maybe why don't you break down, because there are two grooves that you guys just did. Um, did your approach change? depending on the groove I'm, I'm interested to know yeah it, it depends on the style of music reggae obviously it's what what we call a one drop which is just a one drop on the kick and the rim shot of the snare um that's generally my approach right right, right. um i added a little cowbell thingy which was the bell of the hi-hat right just give it a little flavor with reggae you're allowed to be just a little bit i'm not gonna say sloppy but more human okay because i tend to be an android at times especially when playing with a click track but right. you're allowed to be a little bit slippery with reggae and it just gives it that natural feel right right, um, right. for the first groove i I completely agree with what Wade said, where right. drums and bass are the foundation. Right. And because he stayed so disciplined with that first groove, um, it allowed me to be a little bit free. So when he started, I was just listening to the way he played it. Right, right. And um, he didn't change his groove at all. I stayed pretty consistent until guitar came in. Because right. how I think of music is every four to eight bars, not bring in something new, right. but it can evolve from right. there. Right, right, so right, right. when Joseph came in on guitar, that's when I went to snare. Right. Um, and before that, I was thinking more of a verse, chorus, right. softer vibe, which right. was rim shot, double rim, whatever right. I was doing. Yeah, so, so that was my approach. So what's, what's super interesting about that is you're always trying to build. Like yes. no matter what it is you're yeah. playing, like you, you don't, you didn't start like giving everything you had. No. You always have to have in music, there's always somewhere to go. Right. Cause when you get to that climax, it's kind of like, Oh wow. Right. It's beautiful. Rather right, than right, just right. going for it from the jump. Right. 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 So, there yeah. wouldn't have been any room to go anywhere else. No, no. Gotcha. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Jermaine. So talk to us now, um, your approach, right? Um, well, actually you talked to us a little bit about it. Um, let's let's hear from let's go back to Danny. 
what is an organ player? What does the organ player do in a band? What is the organ's job? How does the organ find its lane in a band? Um, it can serve a few different roles, actually, um, depending on the depending on the band and makeup. Um, like, for instance, we've got a we've got a full band here, so with guitar around. Um, I tend to back off just a little bit more than I would if it was just me and a keyboard player. Right. Um, Because you've got you've got to allow space for other people to do things, and we kind of we kind of occupy the same um, frequencies. Right. 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 uh, Drawbar settings are very important. Knowing you know you don't want to go a hundred percent right off the top because then you have nowhere to go after right, that. Right, 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 right. You have right. no way of building uh, dynamics. Right. It's, building dynamics with with a with organ, it's a bit of a skill. Mm. Um, not a lot of people know how to do it properly, and most people it's just all out. Right. 100% pedal to the metal, and right, there right, you go. Right. And, it, and the, whole, the whole thing falls flat after that. Got you. So um, I guess on the first groove, my approach was what Jermaine mentioned earlier on on how he approaches organ, just right. padding. It's a more mellow setting. Right, right, it right. It leaves space for him to kind of... He doesn't necessarily have to stay on the tempo the whole time. He right. can kind of move freely. Right. And it's just one of those things where you probably don't even know it's there, but if I took it off, you'd be like, wait, something's missing. Got you, so. got you. Well, that's awesome. Um, I got a question now for you, Daniel, but... This can actually go to the rest of the band as well after. What role, like, how in your journey, did mentorship, like, was there anyone that kind of helped you get along, somebody that took you along your, uh, you know, along the way, took you under their wing, kind of showed you the ropes? Was that a big part of your journey, or was this something more that you kind of figured out as, as you went along? I'm just curious to know. Um, for the most part, I want to say maybe up until... Maybe two thousand early two thousands. It was me just kind of figuring it out. Right, 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 right. Was, I didn't have a, a lot of. Um, I didn't know a lot of uh, organ players in the city, and it's just recently I'm starting to connect with other people. Right, like right. I've heard names, but I've like I didn't really go anywhere, so I didn't really see people or anything like that. Um, <laughs> right. So, and then there was you know message boards back in the day where people would just post, forums yep yeah write, yeah write yeah, out yeah. the chords and post them and i'm sitting at the school wasting toronto district school board paper and ink just <laughs> okay. printing off binders of for chords real and all of that stuff. okay and wow then, you know youtube came along and right right show me the um sebastian so show me that he came along with his thing right yeah, so um, it, it was a lot of trial and error up until uh, up, up until later in my life where I started getting around other people and learning different things from, from others. Got you, got you. Uh, Joseph, same question, man. Um, like, did mentorship play a big part of your role? Like, has there been some players that you've been around that really helped you to kind of get to that next level? Yeah, I mean... Um my teacher in I started taking lessons with him I think in like late high school okay and then I had him through all university his name is Sean Meredith Jones okay um and I went to like a really small school so there was one jazz ensemble right and that was it what what city uh Ancaster it's like a little west of Hamilton okay yeah yeah yeah. nowhere yeah (laughs) okay um so yeah, it was like one jazz ensemble, so it was pretty much just him. Right, okay. And at that point, there wasn't, I wasn't getting around much in Hamilton or anywhere, really. Right. So my brother was playing drums, um, and so any kind of playing was pretty much me and him finding a bass player. Right, And then okay. going, all right, let's do this, let's play here, play there. Right. But Sean was pretty much like the main mentor. Awesome. Um, and then I met a guy named Ron Clark. In Hamilton. Okay. Guitar player. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of hit me to some stuff. Right. Um, and, you know, brought us into some jams and, right. and kind of sh- showed us the way a little bit. Right. Um, and then once I started coming to the city, there were a couple people um, 
shout out the old Moonhead band, Sam <laughs> Pamanti, Dan Mincham, Isaiah Gibbons, Murray Heaton, David Baldry, uh, Josh Stuckey for a little while. But those guys, that was like my first band in Toronto I started playing with. Got you. And so the first probably year playing with them, I went from here to there because they were right. calling lines and stuff right. that I wasn't used to doing at all. Right, 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 um, right, right. So yeah, pretty much like teacher, Ron, and a bunch of players. Got you. No, no, that's awesome. And actually, wait up. Same question, man. Um, how about you? Was there anyone that well, you kind of? I had um, call it um, mentors that that you're able to talk to, and then you had mentors that you listen to records, right? And you listen, and you just any record that right. they're playing on, that right? Was, that was your guy, right? But. Started off, everything was my father. You know, okay. He's the one that started me on music and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had uh, like Tony Cameron, O'Neill Walker, okay. Wayne Stern. Okay. Those are the, the older mans are just like, you know, right. you have to play music a certain way. Right, right, Even right. Even if you want to come off and get a little bit excited, they pull right. you back and say, uh-uh, you're not supposed to do it. That's right. where my discipline came from. Ah, uh, right? got but you. But then listen to records there's right. the only two guys that actually sat down and really took in was right. Maurice Fitzgerald right. and Andrew Goucher got that's you that's it okay. till today right till that's today, it. Til today. <laughs> that's it no that's awesome man thank you uh Jermaine talk to us a bit about your uh mentorship if that was a role if that was something that happened in your in your journey mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about influences as well um, well, of course, to start off, like uh, Cordell Hay played a major role in my development. Cordell! As, a, All right. as an organist, for sure. Yes, sir. Um, he didn't play. I remember this one time, I was still learning how to play, um, like, or le developing my left hand, and, like, he literally slapped my left hand. Be like, oh, wow. play left chord! <laughs> and honestly, ever since then, it, I've never looked back. Right. Um, so that he's definitely been a... A pivotal played a pivotal role in my development as an organist, right, and as a musician, right, as well. Um, beyond that, um, my evolution was kind of weird because I grew up playing organ and listening more to like Hezzy, got um, you, James Hall, right, those right, dark, right, like diminishing, <laughs> okay. But then when I hit like the two thousands, I um. I buck up in... Wow. I should that. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. No, I got introduced to uh, uh, Judith McAllister. Um, okay. Where yeah. Where you had like Mike Burrell, Jason right. White, uh, Jimmy West Noble, West Coast. <laughs> okay. Um, and so it's like when it came to Oregon, it's like I had that new york type of feel with a mixture of right West Coast, right but then my keys plays my keys playing was like west coast okay <laughs> and it still kind of is but right. as i have evolved like i've taken the bits and pieces from different people right to kind of make my own mold right 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 that's been my um my uh inspiration awesome no that's great uh so we're gonna go over to adrian uh so adrian same question man um mentorship and Influences. What role did that play in your in your journey? Influence. No, I don't think I really had any mentors. Okay. Because I remember when I was like young. I think the only one is like the author and finisher of our faith. Like that's Brother Larnell Lewis. <laughs> yeah, he thought someone called Spirit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Larnell literally is the only. <laughs> Larnell is the only person that I really like looked up to and who was okay. like um, a mentor and. I never even got to ask him questions, or I just watched him from afar. Yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? you're good now. Yeah. Uh, um, the reason why I never really spoke to Larnell, I'm I'm more of like a visual learner, so I like to just watch from afar. And I right. remember one time, some some kid was around him and asked him to show him something on drums. Right. But there were no drums around, and I thought that was so awkward because okay. I was like. I, the other day we spoke about just musicians or humans in general just being so awkward, when, right. especially when they look up to somebody. Right. So the guy just ran up, no hi, no nothing, right, no right. formalities. Okay, it was right. just like, no introduction, no, no what's your name, no, hi. Can you show me this? And Larnell was just like, Larnell's a beautiful human. Me, I probably would have like, are you good? But anyways, <laughs> needless to say, um, ever since then, I was like, I don't want to be that person. I'll just right. always learn from afar. So what right. Wade was saying too was, I just listened to records. Got you. 
my top like three drummers um, that I emulated when I was younger, right. maybe four, would be Jeremy Haynes. No one really knows yep, who that is. Yep, yep, yep. Uh -huh. But he's like one of my favorite all time and no one really knows him which is right. crazy obviously calvin rogers spanky there was a little phase i went through where i was just listening to ty tribute every day <laughs> and that just seeped into my playing okay. and then last one was chris coleman who's like out of the stratosphere when it comes to music right um but yeah i never really i didn't grow up with the jazz people i just it was just straight gospel right i learned to groove from calvin rogers right um, right the chops came from me not actually caring. So I learned how to do that first <laughs> right. before I actually learned to groove. And like, right. just like these guys were saying, playing with the old heads, listen, right. the way I used it to get you. screamed at. Okay. Like guys would stare at me like, what are you doing? There's no reason to fill for, <laughs> for 48 minutes. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so for being real. around those guys, I learned a lot. So, got you, yeah. got you. No, that, that's awesome, awesome. All right, y'all. So you're in for another treat. We're going to get the band to play a little bit more for us. I'm gonna get out of the way again and we're gonna hear the band play. All right, so this song is called Jesus I Love You by Jonathan Nelson, one of, that's actually another influence in my playing as well, that Baltimore ballad vibe. Okay. Yeah, so anyways, Jonathan Nelson, Jesus I Love You.
Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Wow. Did you all just hear that? Did you guys just hear that? They were locked. <laughs> they, they were locked. locked. They, they, right. Thank you, Joel. Like, you, what was that? <laughs> hey, hey, Derek, what's going on, man? You, you, you guys heard it for yourself, man. You can't, you can't make this up. So, you guys have to help us out, man. How? These guys, I think you guys what? You practiced it, what? Twenty minutes? Yeah, 40 Thirty minutes? minutes? Yeah, <laughs> if that. Yeah, talk, talk to us about your process for learning music because you all are you all are pros. Uh, you guys heard it for yourself. I kid you not, guys. These guys came in here, probably ran it for about an hour right before, and he, this is what we're hearing right now. So, again, this is the real deal. We're talking about chemistry. We're hearing people stay in their lane. We're hearing discipline. We're hearing professionalism. Uh, man, you guys have to help us break it down a little bit. And actually, one of the questions specifically that you can address for us is this. What are some of the lessons that you have learned? So think about how, think about your journey. You, you reflected on that. What are some of those key lessons, like those things, those moments? Maybe it was a word of wisdom. Maybe it's something you did from a mistake that you made over time, right? What are those key lessons that you have learned that helped you to be prepared for the moment? I'll go first. Guys. Let's get weight on that. <laughs> I want to get this out the way. Well, uh, my thing with practicing I have like a novel mm. things, like worth of things to say about practicing. Yeah, talk to us about that. Um, well, one of the things I've learned over the years I played is it's all about time management, mm. right? And the problem is, is that um, when you do get a chance to uh, practice, you have to ask yourself, like, what are you able to achieve, right? Like, right. A lot of guys they they tend to practice and they just throw records on and start playing, playing, playing. But what right. are you? What is it you're trying to achieve? Right. What's right? the goal? What's the goal? Exactly. Right. 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 So um, for me, I always say practicing, even if it's a church, whether it's a gig, even if it's a tour, ninety five percent of your success in playing the uh -huh. gig correctly is done at home. Right. Wow. Five percent is literally with the band. Because wow. You now you know the song well enough that when you guys come together now, it's just literally putting things together. Right. If you have to iron out little pieces, okay, that's fine. Right, 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 but right, right, right. Think about it, it's different if you don't know the song. Got you. I don't know about anybody. I don't like my time being wasted. Right. I don't want it to waste anyone else's time. Right, right, so right, right, right. I try to anytime I get a gig or a, a material to learn, right. um, I make sure that I learn it well enough that even if the MD makes a mistake, uh -huh. I'm able to correct him and say, no, go one more time. Wow. Wow. You, you, you've right? studied. You've done your homework. Of course. Exactly. Right, 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 and right. And then at right. the same time, you want to be, the MD wants to be more relaxed and, and play. Right. So even right, if there's right, a right. vamp or a bridge, all he has to do or she has to do is right. just look at you and right. you know exactly where you are. Right, right, Don't right, right. Don't be calling, right. okay, vamp, okay, go to the five, go to right. the, you right, already right, know. Right, 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 Anything right, Anything that right, he's right. calling or she's calling is right. very spontaneous. Right, 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 right. So just yeah. the importance of, make, you talked about time management. Yes, yeah, like, yeah. for example, I want to touch, a little bit of touch on that, like time management, whether you're married, whether mm, come you're, on, you're talk not to married, us. I mean, you owe, we, we go through life, you see what I'm saying? Right. So, Especially for guys or, or, or women who are, are married now, is literally trying to separate that time with family, right? Your music, you right. see what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of more times is that when we do have like you know a lot of songs to you know practice whatever, right? Our family is you know affected by it, right? So right. I always suggest even if you have five minutes, mm -hmm. okay. Put it, put aside five minutes, right? But you have to make sure that five minutes counts. Counts, right? Right, w right, right. What are you trying to achieve, right? right Whether right, it's five right. minutes, ten minutes, right? An hour, right? Or even a day. My the way how I balance mine is uh -huh. on Saturday, right? So I, I make sure right. I do all the, the shopping, right? Do all the stuff on Friday if right. I can, or even early Saturday morning. But if I let my family know and say, listen, right. I gotta practice, I gotta do this, right? I know that if you give me one day, right. everything that I'm trying to accomplish, we'll it will done. get done. You just need a day. If you give me 10 tracks, right. I'm recording all of them that day. Wow. If you give me 30 songs to learn, right. I'm going to learn 
30 songs in that day. In that day. <laughs> wow. But yeah, yeah, Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? No. no sorry. Right. <laughs> right. That's it. Because that's all the time. Right. Right, right, right. All right. So it's all about time management, right. balance, right? And talk to us a little bit, Wade, because I know you had to definitely build up your skill, right, to be able to execute that effectively. Would you say that, because I know you talked about transitions and life happening yeah. and stuff, so yeah. was that always your routine or did you kind of do... No, ever right. since when I start having kids, getting right. married. Right. I mean, it's so easy to do certain things even if you're, you're not married, right? But right. still, you have life. You know, right. you're working, you're, right. you know, you're going to school, school whatever. Stuff's going on, right? Yeah. It's, it's whatever, that's... That's why a lot of people ask me, like, how much time should I, you know, you know take to, to practice? And I right. say, I can't give you that time because it's literally on your schedule. Your schedule, right. So right. it's literally whatever you're available, available if it's five minutes, an right. hour, right. 15 minutes, okay, fine. Do that. Got gotcha. you. Practice on that time. Right. All right. But gotcha. then, like I said, over the years, I develop. And then, you know, at one point in time, my family started to suffer. Mm. And if my family suffer, right. guess what? The music is to suffer. Right, because right, right, Everything right. at home is not correct. Right, so right, right. I had to take care of home first right. and then manage my time and right. say, okay, you know what? At this time, guys, I got to do this. Right. And they respect it. And right. then after that, when I'm done, You're I'm done. all yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's some wisdom and some words of advice. Uh, so thank you for that. That's that's key. That we're, we're not only getting musical knowledge, we're getting life knowledge. So that's that's awesome. Thank you. Um, we're going to ask the same question, just talking about, again, that whole process, practicing and, and, and working with time. How? Uh, let's get Adrian on that question. Hi, can you guys hear me? <laughs> we got you, Adrian. Right, cool. it, yeah, just making sure. Um, in regards to practice, a lot of people don't know that I practiced a lot when I was younger. Um, mm -hmm. People just think I came out of the woodworks playing and like I was just playing at that level. Which is, well, back in the day wasn't very good because I had no musical sense when it came to band. I was just practicing by myself. Right. But I would practice, I don't know, anywhere from three, four, five hours a day. Right. Obviously, that's tapered off <laughs> tremendously. Right. Um, as Wade said, when, when it comes to like life and all that stuff, sometimes you just get busy. But right. um, e I, piggyback off of what he said, everything, if, if stuff is not right at home, it's definitely going to affect your musical ability and your practice and how you play. Right. So you just got to be mindful of that. Um, when I'm learning or practicing a song, um, a lot of younger guys tend to just get on as soon as they hear it and play along with it. Right. They don't really tend to listen to it. Right, right, um, right, right. I always listen first. That, that's why earlier when Wade started playing a groove, right. I was listening rather than just, oh, let me jump on. Right, you know I mean? right, right. So right. With, with the songs that we did today, <laughs> for the most part, yes, I listened to it. Right. Um, just to understand musically where they're going, right. why they did what they did. Right. Um, and it gives me a deeper understanding of how to play it and my approach. A lot of drummers, uh -huh. uh, let me not call drummers. Yeah, let me call drummers out. But <laughs> let me call musicians out okay. in general. They don't know like words and all that stuff. Right. When it comes to music, I listen to right. the totality of the music, which right. is the words, the lyrics, how right. it coincides with the music that we're playing. Right. So that from a just even when I'm playing drums, I can right. accentuate what the singers are singing right. or what the lead person's doing. Right. That's right, right, my right. personal approach right. when I'm learning music. Awesome. No, that's awesome. And and quickly, um, just on the other end of that question is any lessons you might have learned that helped you to get to where you are now? Uh, the biggest lesson was, I said this earlier, was um, my sister, actually, my older sister. I played for a choir back in the day when I was like maybe 15 or 16, um, and I had a, a, a drum solo, and I walked off the drums like, yo, I killed that. <laughs> I'm right. amazing. Right, And right, my sister right. looked at me like, what the hell was that? Like, nobody understood what that was because right. no one knew where the one was. Right. Um, and I said it before, but... A lot of, like, the general population who doesn't understand music, like, we speak numbers, we speak chords, right. minor 7, C9, right. like, right. you know, you right. understand right. that right. stuff. Right. The average human doesn't understand that. Right. And um, a lot of times you have to play it down simple for them. And at the end of the day, as long as you get them grooving, you can get their head moving. Right. It's not a lot of the chops and subdivisions right. and chords and runs because right. the average human doesn't understand that. Got you. So having that experience, her calling me out like that, right. like I was just like, geez, y'all really don't understand. It's fine. I'll right. just right, right, dumbify right. and break it down. So yeah. Got you. And one last question for you, Adrian, on that note, because what's interesting, you were actually here on Monday. Mm -hmm. So the band's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but overall the consistency is still there. Mm -hmm. Like the sound is still there. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. 
Um, chemistry is very important. Uh, I've been playing with Wade for years now. I remember right. when I was like young, young, <laughs> right. like asking him, right. oh my God, you're so amazing on bass. Like, <laughs> it's just, you know what I mean? Like, I've been around, I just met up with Joseph, but he's incredible. Yeah, Jermaine he's also. Yep. Daniel, I've been around too since yeah. I was like super, super young. So even though we don't play together all the time, right. us as human beings, we're generally... I think I'm, I'd say I'm the weirdest one out of everybody, to be honest. But like, every, <laughs> but everybody, <laughs> but collectively, like, we're all beautiful human beings inside, not outward. <laughs> 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 Yo, I'm speaking for myself. I know, my bad. Oh, y'all are gorgeous. But needless to say, um, that translates to when we're playing, um, right. having that chemistry, because there's times where Wade will do something. Right. And because I've been around him, all right. we need to do is lock eyes and we just understand. Right. Same thing with Jermaine, same thing with Joseph, same right. thing with Daniel. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Being in a band setting doesn't mean you're in your own world. You right. definitely have to lock eyes with everybody, look Communicate, around. Right. You know, and it, it also breeds confidence, even though we're all confident in our right. own right. Right. But us looking around, smiling with each right, other, right, like, right, oh, right. maybe I'm doing something right. Maybe I'm right. doing something wrong. Right, but, right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Got that's you. my answer. No, that, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, we're going to get Daniel on that same question. So, Daniel, Daniel, you're looking at me strange, bro. <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> I'm never prepared when it's my turn. Okay. <laughs> talk, talk, Daniel, talk to us. Like, uh, that whole process of, again, ke- well, talk to us a little bit about chemistry and, you know, how you approach developing chemistry. Is that something spontaneous? Is it worked on over time, et cetera? Your approach on that. And then talk to us a little bit about any major lessons you've learned sort of along your um, for chemistry, I found that um, each individual, each individual player's attitude, just in general, has a lot to do with that. Mm. Um, you know, you can have a band with the most amazing people, but you know, a couple people have a bad attitude about mm. them. Okay, and the whole thing is just something's like you're going to hear music, but you're not going to hear music. Like okay, okay. something's going to be a, a little off. right, right. You can, it's just one of those things. So, you know, whenever everybody comes, like we're all here, everyone comes with a positive attitude. Right. You know, we're pretty open to, and, you know, just what, what Adrian was mentioning about, you know, looking around and. Right, right. Uh, you know, you don't have to stare into each other's soul or anything like that. But, <laughs> right. you know, but just like a, a quick hey, all right, we're doing something together where, you know, we're, right, we're making right, music. Right, right, right. It, it just helps. It really, it right. really does help. Sight lines are, are, right. are a great thing. Um, and that communication, right, is because there's no talk back. Well, maybe there's one talk back. But that whole communication that's not even verbal, like mm-hmm. you're talking about just, you know, a nod, a, a, a look in the right direction, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And that, like, you can't even really put words to that. It's just doing something together, I guess. It's, just a, it's a musician thing. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a musician thing. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank, thank you for that, Daniel. Um, let's get Jermaine on this question on any major lessons you've learned along the way and talk a little bit about, about chemistry as well. Um, never assume. And what I mean by that is kind of going back to like learning music. Um, a lot of times we kind of think we have the gist of something where we kind of listen to it once. Um, like even for me, I'll listen to songs now that I was learning, like when I was like 15 Mm. and then because my ear developed over time, when I go back and listen to it, I'm like, wait, that was there the whole time? Right, 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 right. So never assume, like literally walk through each second or minute of that song. Right. Especially if you know you got to learn it so that you're not assuming what the song is supposed to be. Right. um, Or how it goes. Right, right, right. right. Um, Chemistry. Uh, is it just there or not? Is that yeah, kind of no, how it no, works? It's not just there. Okay. <laughs> not just there. Um, it's it's hit and miss, man. Okay. Um, to be honest, uh, because as we spoke about on Monday, um, you can be super talented but not have the right mindset, mm. not ha- not be inclined to um what's going on around you, opposed to like as we spoke about it, or there's a difference between a bass player and uh, being a musician, right? As a musician, right. you step out of that role in terms of what you're hearing and how you look at things, and you look at things from the full perspective. Right. Like, for example, for me, 
if I know that, like, for example, the the praise team is singing or the background singers are singing and they're playing a G or, or singing a G, right? Most times I'm gonna I'm gonna play that G, right? Where you have other guys that might play some other type of chord, which in certain times that can work, right? But for the most part, they kind of go hand in hand, mm. kind of thing. Um, so yeah, as I said, chemistry is not something that you come by easily. Right. Because um, I'll be honest, there are certain guys I definitely would not have called right. for this event. Right. Only because of the... It's not that they're not talented, but it's just their mindset. They don't understand music as a whole. Because when you call on them, they just they just get lost in their own sauce. Got you. They so don't. So it's almost like there's no I in team kind of Literally. approach. Okay, Literally, okay, right? okay, okay, okay. Um, because I mean, I even draw basketball reference. As much as Jordan is great, he still needed Steve Kerr. He right. Still need he still needed Will Purdue and Scotty. Like he right. could not have done it by himself. Right. Right. So, and I mean, of course, it wasn't always like that. But he had to learn. Like, yo, I gotta look at it from the wider perspective. Right. So that we can come together and make. Well, obviously not great. Make great music, but get a championship. <laughs> right. So, it is. It's, yeah, it's it's sort of the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> if you much. really take yeah, it in, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, okay. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know. Did you talk about mentorship at all? Like, did you get? Do we get you no, on that? I don't think so. Um, from what aspect? Well, like, was it a big thing for you? Like, did you have anyone that really? Oh no! Yeah, I did. No. Oh, we was, talked. It was Cordell. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we did get you on that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. Awesome. And one last question for you, Jermaine, mm -hmm. before before we sort of move on. Um, how did you think back to yourself like when you were like 15 or 13 or, you know, like put yourself back in, in, in time a little bit. Mm -hmm. How did you stay hungry? How did you stay ready? Like how did you in those moments over time keep motivated? Because as you grow and, you know, life was going on and everything's happening, you had to somehow keep that desire to better yourself over time, right? I think what really played a pivotal role is things weren't handed to me. Okay. I think a lot of us grew up with that too. We're just like, mm -hmm. you had to work. Right. For it. Like, right. I remember growing up, like, you know, around like, um, you know, Cordell and there's other musicians around the city, like Ron Thomas. Right. Um, a whole bunch, like Godfrey Thompson, a whole bunch of guys. Right. I always wanted to be able to play on their level. Right. And it's like, yeah, they might see you and hear you. Oh, yeah, that's cute. You know, yeah. you can play a little card. <laughs> but it's like when it came time to really play, right. I couldn't hang. Right. Right. And you got four gold. Right. It was right. over, man. Right. Um, so, wow. Sorry. That's Jamal Europe in me. I'm so sorry. I got to get rid of that. But anyways, um, <laughs> but no, you got four gold. Um, so that pushed me right. to mm -hmm. say, yo, nah, man. I, no, you're not. You guys are not kicking me out. Are you crazy? I can do this, right? right, right, right. Um, where I, I, whereas I think now times have kind of changed, mm. where we're not as rigid. Okay. Not. Is that good or bad? Uh, I. It, it, it can be. I think it's kind of bad still. Okay. Because there is a sense of entitlement that comes with that, mm. where because. Because you've given them too much rope, where they think they you, they get a little, they get to play every Sunday morning and whatnot, or you get they get to this opportunity, that opportunity that they feel like they've arrived. Okay. And if I were to be quite honest, mm. okay, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, now. yo, um, <laughs> it, it, it is no knock. I I appreciate the music that's out there now, but because a lot of our music is CCM driven now, okay. it's not challenging. I can even say for myself, like, because most times I'm playing CCM, I'm even rusty. Right. Mm -hmm. Playing these songs today? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Right. I felt like I was learning all over again, right? right. So I right, think, right, right. as I said, um, people, I would say the, the younger musician, not all of them, not all of them, right. but I would say a good amount of them, they think that they've arrived because, oh, yeah, I can play um, the latest Todd Delaney. Okay, but can you play James Hall? Can you play a jazz chord? Right. right? And again, it's not to knock, but I, 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 I'm just saying to say that it can be a bad thing. And yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. people enable this behavior. And again, people now become entitled when they can't even play in every key. Got you. Right? Got so you. that's kind of how I look at it. Awesome. Well, no, thank, thanks for sharing. No, that's awesome. Uh, Joseph, on that same question, uh, any big lessons that you've learned sort of along the way? Um... Yeah, I mean, there, there was there was one for sure, and I think it was I was like in high school or university, and uh, I went into 
a recording session, um, and they had gear set up there that indicated they wanted a certain sound. Okay. Okay? Yeah. I wasn't thinking like that. Right. I went in probably more headstrong than I should have and went, no, 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 I know what these tracks need. Right, right, you right, know, right, right. play yeah. the stuff, yeah. play it down, you don't right. end up on the record, they go right. okay, bye-bye, you know. Right. Okay, and right, right. so I went, oh, okay. Um, and from then on, it was just like, just don't get in the way. Right, right, play right. what the song needs. Right. Um, play what the, like, what complements the other players, if, if you can. Right. Um, Especially as guitar, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. we're doing everything. For, it's like keys. We're doing everything from padding to lead stuff to, you know, funky single note, almost like clav type things in between. Um, so, like, what does the song need? Just get your ego out of there. Right, and right. the yeah. best players I've found are also the best people, right. just in general. Right, right, right. Um, they're easygoing. They're not jerks. They right. treat you well, right, you know. Right, right. They're not a. I think they're not a. I don't remember who it was that said it, but they're not assumptive. Right. Is like right, one right. of the biggest things. Right. Um, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's yeah. that's great. That's great. Thank that you. That was so yeah. That was my one big lesson. No, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so going back here. No, this is great. Um, we, we've, we've got a chance to hear from so many uh, of these amazing musicians. Um, you know, I, I want to just get a sense of who we have in the room. Is this a room full of drummers right now? Is this a room full of keyboard players? Do we have some organists? Uh, feel free to unmute. Like, let, let's get, let's hear, let's hear. Who do we have here? Who? Yeah, let's hear from the organists. Yeah, who do we have? Interested. Who do we have in the room right now? Yeah, just feel free to unmute yourself. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm an organist uh, slash keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Joe, yeah, I rate it. I rate it. We, 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 we don't want organ to get lost, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's facts, 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 facts. Facts, man. We got to keep, we gotta I'm, keep I'm it trying, alive. I'm trying to get, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get better at organ because I really have a chance to play. Okay. So every time I play, I try, to, I try to get used to not seeing it for a long time. So, you know, I get off, yeah. For real. Yo, Joel, as soon as we're open back, uh, for our programs and stuff, man. You got to come hit up the spot. We got an organ here. Uh, you can for come sure, practice. Sure. All of that good stuff, man, for sure. <laughs> you already know. Um, no, that's wonderful. Any, uh, let's, hear, let's hear from some, some other folks. Who, who, else we got, who else we got here on the call right now? Any, any, any other guitar players? Any bass players? Any singers here? Yes, Joel. Hey, easy, right. easy, easy, easy. Era. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Big up, big up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, man. I must say thanks for organizing this. You know. Hey, Malcolm, what's up? You look different. I'm telling you, I listen to the guys play that song, and I learned so much from them. You know, the way uh, there's a lot of sequence, a lot of little eras in the song and they played it just like how it sounded on the cd right 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 i'm like wow uh i mean i for me to play a song like that i would have to um listen to it a lot right 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 like for me that's you know i'm not fast i'm not a fast learner like these guys i would have to listen to it a lot and then that's how i do listen sequence to sequence right right right, right. guys i mean i don't know long <laughs> Maybe they just got it recently, and they they, they locked it, man. Yeah, I'm they. I, I, it's it's something to behold for real, man. They, as I said, they literally ran it a couple times right before the session, and they're ready to go. So it's it's something to behold for sure. Uh, anyone? Yeah, man, amazing. The, the sections. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. No, no, no. This is great, Errol. Thank you. Uh, Athol, Athol, what's good? Yo, Athol, you hearing us? I see I see him on I see him on on here. Atho was actually in our first session on Monday. If you guys missed it, uh definitely get the recorder once it drops. It was great uh to be honest. Yeah, man. Uh, Atho, good good to see. You. I don't know if you're hearing us, but um big ups to you, brother. Hey, yeah, man. What's up? You all right? I'm good. How how's how are too. Say again? <laughs> I'm trying to learn something for every student. Hey man, that's the thing, right? You're never too, you're never too advanced. You're never too, you've never arrived. If you've arrived, then right. that's it, man. 
That's awesome, Athel. Um, that's great. Anyone else? Anyone else? I see some people in the group chat. We have a drummer in the room. We have a keyboard aux player. Nice, nice. Uh, singers were here. Oh, I guess not anymore. Um, uh, awesome. No, that's great. All right, so we are going to keep things moving. We have a couple more questions. You all had actually submit some questions for the band ahead of this session. So we want to make sure that we can get those covered uh, for you guys. Um, so let's pull those up real quick. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to actually get... Jermaine has his keyboard. I don't think he's actually played anything for us on keys. That's right. I know he did on... That's right. I know he did on, on, on uh, when he was on the organ. But uh, Jermaine, can you, can, you give us, can you give us a little bit of keys right now while we get, while we get this going? <laughs> awesome no thank you jermaine that sounded beautiful uh jermaine on that same note man you got to answer this question for us we this was one of the ones that had come in how do you give off a, a professional impression that was one of the questions that came in how do you create or have a professional impression um i think it starts from the way you look first because Naturally, bef um, as you enter a room and you haven't met someone for the first time or whoever it is, they're going to look at how you're dressed. Right. And it's not that you have to wear a name brand, but like, do you put yourself together well? Right. Um, I think the next thing would be how you carry a conversation. Mm. Um, and then I would also say, are you prepared for the task? Right. So I think those are the three things that I would look at. Awesome. So preparation... Uh, presentation yes and coming prepared yeah pretty much awesome no that's great thank you uh and and there was another question that kind of came in um i'm just looking at our list here so there was uh, a couple um people actually wanted to learn a little bit about different keyboard techniques things like substitutions i know we don't have a lot of time to cover specific things Wait. But, <laughs> yeah. but can you? Yeah. But can you tell? Awesome. Should we? Should I'll, we get? I'll yeah, let, 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 let's talk about that a little bit because that was one of the things that people wanted to know. Who's the right guy though? Come in here. All right. Um, substitutions. Um, keyboard techniques. Uh, man. Are you are you a technical player? Would you consider yourself a very technical player? No, not at all. To okay. Honest. Um, to a certain extent, yes, but no. Because I grew up in church, mm -hmm. um, everything was just uh, natural in terms of, or unorthodox, I'll okay. say, right. um, in terms of how I learned how to play. Right. Um, it wasn't until I got older where I kind of tried to dibble-dabble. Dibble, dibble -dabble. Um, I did go to Humber for like maybe a year for their um, introduction to commercial jazz program. Right. Okay, nice. Um, so that really opened up my ears um, and my musical palette. Right. Um, so yeah, like in terms of keyboard techniques, kick techniques, um, I think repetition, mm. um, and in terms of, yeah, um, we have a visitor in the room, um, but yes, um, uh, repetition in terms of, I'd say keyboard is probably one of the hardest, keyboard slash organ is probably one of the hardest instruments out there to learn because if you learn one thing in one key, it's not the same in every other key. Right, It's like right, literally right. you're learning a whole... It could be the same progression. Right? Right. So just 
um, that 736 progression alone, it's like it looks and sounds different in each key, right? Um, so I think it's a matter of uh, repetition and um, muscle memory when it comes to uh, memorizing um, and, and mastering that right. scale or chord in each key. Type right. Of key. Um, substitutions. Right. Man. And Anna's another one too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, substitutions. Um, I look at substitutions in terms of you can look at it as if I'm playing a C, instead of me playing a, a, a one, mm -hmm. I'll take, um, you're pretty much taking a note out of that chord. Okay. And so in C, we have C, E, G. Right. So instead of me playing the C, I'd play a, a, a three. Right. Right. Which in, like, call, for example, in like, Call it Jamaican music. There's no such thing as tree. Right. Three. Sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> right. It's literally just one. It's it's just literally one. Right. And then you have four and you have five. Right. But again, in this case, um, you're instead of playing one with the C, and then if you're playing the uh, four, instead of playing the F in my bass line in my left hand, I'll play the six because right. that six is an A, which is a part of the F major. Right. And right, the same right, thing right. with the seven. Right? right, in my G major, I have a B, right? So literally, it's like foundation-wise, mm -hmm. it's literally you're taking um, another part of that chord instead right. of playing the root, you're playing like um, another uh, piece of that chord. In a Got sense. you. W whether it be the third or the fifth. Got you. There is a deeper, deeper like substitution list, right. but that's pretty much the foundation. Right. No, that's yeah. great. That's great. Thank you. Um. Organ, anything on substitutions on that question? Sorry, give me the question one more time. So, uh, just in terms, of one of the questions that came in was just about like chord voicings and substitutions. I know it's a very generalized way, but maybe talk a little bit about your approach. Like, how do you sort of, you know, ensure that the chords correct placement of chords? and ensuring that sort of the voicings are right and maybe even switching voicings after things might get redundant. Talk a little bit about that. Um, it kind of goes back to what uh, Duane was saying earlier about learning not just your part, but the entire song. Mm. So, you know, I tend to learn most music on, on piano first. And then once I kind of have an idea... And then it also depends on... Is that know, based on preference or is that just lack of access to an organ? I'm just curious. Uh, lack of access. <laughs> lack of access. But, uh, but, what, but what it does help me to do is it helps me to... Es Oops. Especially um, when, when I know I'm going to I was like, be... what was that? I was like... <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> no. Um, what it helps me to do is... it. I, l I learned a song from the perspective of, of a piano player. And it's, it's very helpful when I'm playing organ because right. now I'm, th I'm thinking like a piano player, but then I know that I don't necessarily want to play everything the piano player does. Or right. It's almost no point to me kind of being here. Right, right, so, right, right. right. Um, and then it also kind of helps to know a little bit about the other person you're playing with, kind of right. what their tendencies are. So Got you. if I know... If I know Jermaine's gonna, you know, maybe perhaps take the melody on on his as his leading note, right? That's when I try to use different voice scenes or other substitutions to kind of help the organs um, sort of stand apart in the mix. Not that right. I'm trying to overpower anything, but right, 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 just to create a little bit of separation. Right, right, so right. That, you know, he's heard. You hear the piano perfectly clear yep. but then you also hear the organ clear with nobody stepping on anybody's toes got you so it's all about knowing sort of your role and making sure you're in your lane basically yeah. okay awesome no that's great uh no thank you so much for that uh just a couple more questions um so one of this is a, this is uh i think this is for the bass and the guitar players what are some uh, uh, ways to increase stamina in your playing so stretches on your instruments um exercises do you guys get into that at, at all joseph you want to take that one uh, uh i guess this kind of goes hand in hand with the technique thing yeah 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 um but i would pick songs on purpose that i knew i couldn't play and then practice them basically until i could 
Um, and usually that meant taking things, slowing them down like crazy, and then slowly upping the BPM until... Um, right. Until I could do it. So yeah. doing it very slow oh, to start. Man. It was slow. like a week process. Right, right, of right, right. Maybe even getting a lick right. or a line or something. Maybe really? like a bunch of different chord changes really fast. Right. Um, but taking something basically that I knew I couldn't do. Right. And then slowing it down, starting from the bottom pretty right. much. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Um, <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't think about it until after I said it. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, yeah. but no, like starting with something that you 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 know you can't do, right? Maybe at that tempo, right? At, call it whatever you want, performance tempo or whatever, right? Um, and working your way up to it. And is that usually with a metronome? Is oh, that just in the air? Yeah. Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Start like slower than you know you can play. Mm -hmm. Even if you can play it at a certain speed, slow it down slow it until down. you know you've got it. And right. if you can do it like 10 times correct, right. you bump the metronome up a few BPM. Got you, got you. And it was basically that until I was playing it at the tempo. At tempo. Yeah. Okay, so and like, that helped with stamina too, because like you're just doing the same thing over and over. So then when you. that part did come in the middle of, say, a, however long a song might be, it's there. Right. And you don't have to worry about your hands not doing it got you talk talk i'm a guitar player so i'll, I'll get a little into the minutia uh -oh. i'll talk about uh pick talk about picking techniques like are you what I'm kinds of stuff are you worst into? person to ask oh, about are, you, are you really <laughs> yeah i tried to do the legato thing yeah. i tried to do the alternate picking thing yeah. and it just turned into like a mishmash of everything whatever huh? feels good but also works okay so got you. um i'm trying to like there aren't many songs, like I guess, in this sort of setting or context where right. you would play something where you have to play that and it has to be alternate picked. Right. Right. Okay. Unless right. an MD or producer, whoever goes, I want it to sound this way. And you go, right. oh, I see you want right. me to play it that way. Right. 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 In right. which case, hopefully you, you, you know, you want your chops to be able to do that. Right. 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 Um, but personally, I just kind of do this weird kind of combination alternate hybrid mix yeah. okay got yeah. you got you wait do you have anything on that in terms of technique or stamina i know for bass especially it can be a lot when you're playing for um well for you see here's the thing and this is why like guys who are learning right now they're so fortunate now because we're living in a technology right uh living right right back then when you hear a run we rewinding that tape, you know? mm. and you're picking it up. And I'll be, I'll, remember, I'll remember when the time I was learning Reggie Young's a lot of runs. Okay, I'd be sitting there for a month, right, just trying to get that. Just run. trying to get it for real. You for know real. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. Now, today's world that we have all this technology, we have these things called slow player. Right. So it, it just it's handed to you. Yeah. So yeah, take yeah. the song and just slow it and hear it and then practice it. Got you know what I mean? Got so you. for me now. Um, what I usually do when I was younger, I was taking shout bass lines. Mm, okay. Slow it down. Just doing that. Like, um, and then mm. speed it up. Okay. And that's how wow. I kind of developed yeah, it. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And yeah. go wow. through all the keys, right? Right, so. right, right, right. No, that's that's a nice little technique because I saw you got all you the hands. All the fingers. All in the there, fingers and I involved. use that even when I'm warming up when my hands are cold. Right. I use that. Okay, nice. So hopefully that that got that, that question answered uh, for that person that had asked it. Uh, no, that's that's great. Uh, we're we're kind of winding down um, and we're getting ready for the band to play us out. Um, but I did want to sort of open up the floor uh, just for our audience in case there are uh, any specific questions you can have a question if it's for a particular player maybe it's something you want to hear from everybody on uh so the floor will be open in just a minute but i got one more question for the band so ben the last question i think this is a good way to kind of wrap up uh we talked a lot about uh, on the musical side of things but i know people are also really interested in learning more about the uh, you know, the sort of business and, and, and industry side of music. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? Because a lot of folks, one of the questions that kind of came through was, you know, how do you balance between sort of the artistic side and the performance 
And then on the other hand, like sort of the business side and, and make sure that those two things coincide. So um, does anyone want to take a, a stab at that question? Um, I'll start off. Simply look at yourself from a business side as a franchise. Um, as much as you're just, as much as you might look at yourself as just a musician, if you're a musician that's um, inspiring or aspiring rather to be a professional musician, you have to look at yourself as a business, as a franchise. Where, um, for example, uh, McDonald's or all these companies, like right. they carry themselves in a certain way. Maybe not all their employees, right? But their food is pretty consistent, right? Um, um, so and they always make sure that um, the food is stocked up. Right. Um, it's readily available at, within a certain time. Right. Um, and I'll ref- reference that to like sometimes with musicians or producer where the deadline is given to you, but you don't meet it. Where it's like, oh, you know, just give me two more weeks or. Right. Oh, OK, no, just give me two more weeks. Right. Right. So I think it's a matter of just um, switching your mindset to be a bit more corporate in terms of, you know, someone has literally come into your store and they say, we want this. You're not going to tell them, oh, you know, you have to wait two weeks. Right. No, you're literally going to be like, they're going to pick it up. They're going to bring it to the cash register and say, hey, okay, it's going to be such and such. Right, and so right, right, right. It's as much as you may want the money, you need to also provide a certain quality of product as well. Got gotcha. you. So that's kind of how I look at it. No, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, actually, Adrian, yeah, we, yeah. We, 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 let's get you on this. I wanted to piggyback off of what uh, Jermaine said in regards to looking at yourself as a brand in a franchise. Um, I had the opportunity to talk with some decent human beings in my life. Um, and one of them, uh, what's his full name? Dan, Dan, Daniel Caesar. Um, because me and his manager, Matthew Burnett, are actually like real close, we're good friends, a lot of times um, when I would ask him something, he would... In regards to Danny, he would have to make sure it aligns with Danny's brand, with the music that he's putting out and all that stuff. And that's how they look at that whole entity. Um, And you have to look at yourself like that, as Jermaine said. So um, a lot of times when I'm playing drums or I'm just in public, I have to be super, super mindful. Not to say, even though I do say a lot of things out of pocket, but for the most part, I'm mindful. So I have my own opinions. You're allowed to have your own opinions. Everybody um, has their own opinions. When it comes to that certain type of thing, you know, I tend to, like, be mindful. Um, And, yeah, that's normally my approach when it comes to, like, thinking of myself as a brand. I'm not going to say certain things that might tarnish that brand because there's a lot of people that will say certain things and be canceled even before they start. Um, When I was younger... A lot of times I would say things or do certain things where word of mouth goes before you. Right, where people would be right. like, I don't want to work with that guy because I heard they necessarily they didn't even they, they didn't, even, didn't even give you a, they a chance around me. Right, right, but right. Just the mere fact that they heard that, they don't want to take the chance on that. So gotcha. you have to be mindful of especially nowadays, because everyone has cameras and thing. You gotta be right. super, super mindful about what you're putting out there. And it always has to kind of align with what you see yourself doing and what you're doing in the future. Got you. So So, I mean, in retrospect, um, just going back to that whole point, basically you're saying a lot of it has to do with sort of that balance of, you know, yourself as a brand and understanding it's sort of bigger than you in a, in a little bit, Absolutely. in a, in a sense, right? It's always bigger than, than, than you. Um, I learned that being on the road, being on tour, half the time I walk off stage, someone will scream at me, yo, great job on keys. Like. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was playing drums. What do you mean? Right. Like they're not paying attention because right. it's never really about you. It's right. about what you align yourself with. And got you. Yeah, you just got to be mindful of that. Awesome. No, that. Thank you. That's that's great. Um. So no, that that's awesome. I think we've got a chance to hear from, uh, just about anyone. So the floor is going to be open. Um. If there's anyone that has any last questions before the band gives us their final performance. Uh, for tonight, I just wanted to make sure there was there were no burning questions, um, any last things that folks wanted to hear or see covered uh, right before we call it a night. Were there any other questions from, from our audience? Hey, Joel. Um, Howard, what's here. going on, bro? I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. So I wanted to ask this question um, a while ago, and of course, um, most likely it will be more for the keyboardists and um, the organist, 
Okay. Um, one thing that I wanted to find out was, um, depending on an individual's air sensitivity, um, like everyone's at different levels where the air is concerned. So I might be sitting at home thinking that I'm playing the correct chord after spending hours on the song. But then I go to the gig and I find out that like I'm way off. So what, especially, so it's like almost two parts. Mm -hmm. When do you get to the point of confidence in your ear, seeing that you spent like your 95% at home, right. practicing to the best of your ability, putting the time, because um, as Jermaine mentioned, um, I've even found in, in, my, in my journey, like as I'm coming up in things of the sort, revisiting songs that I thought I had right like uh, two years later and just having to redo the whole thing right right but at that moment like you know as and, as, and i had to play the song i had to go to church and i had to play it for a convention uh, but i thought that i was okay at that moment right you visited the song right and didn't realize at that moment how do you now in a setting where you can play, but your air, your sensitivity is not at, at the, I guess, industry standard. What do you do in that moment to to really, like, get past that, I guess, that confidence level? Where it's like, you, I know, and I know, and I know, and I know that, you know, this is the right chord for sure. Right. That when I go to this rehearsal, when I go to the first rehearsal, when I go to the second rehearsal, there's no like stop rehearsal. Yo, you have to add the four to that, or or you have to take like, mm, that's a minor, or or like right, oh, right, know, right. So you have to flatten that. You know, when do you get to that right. point where you just know? Is it just something that just happens where you're not getting much complaints, or like rehearsal doesn't get um, shut down for the moment? Or, right. Like, like you know, or is it like when when do you get to that point? Because I've also run into situations where you see. Like people that are like two people that are very advanced, very advanced in their playing, but like sometimes they might hit a different chord at that moment and have to readjust. Right, right. It's like which one is right? You know, these this person spent the same amount of time or more or a little bit right. like practicing the same song and heard something different. Like when do you get to that point? Got you. So let's so let's practice. perfect. So let's get let's get uh Jermaine on that and then we'll get uh Dan uh Daniel on that real quick. Um, it, it, uh, it, it just comes, I think it comes with time. Um, but I think it also comes with a lot of observation, um, reflection, um, in terms of, and I mean, I think a lot, that would help a lot. What would help a lot with that is, um, recording yourself a lot, um, mm. Because playback doesn't lie, right? Um, so I think, right? Um, if you're if you record yourself while you're playing at that service concert, or whatever, and you're hearing how you sound with the rest of the band or with the keyboarders or whatever, that kind of gives you a good idea as to where you should be or what you need to work on, um, right? So I think it really comes down to being intentional, where it's like in the moment. You're not going to remember by the time you get home what happened. So as I said, that recording will be very useful in terms of you being able to hear where you're at. Right. And um, fixing this and fixing that. But I think um, I th <laughs> it's funny because I know who this guy is. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, you just have to get out of your head. Um, you just you really have to get out of your head because um, a lot of times we can overthink things thinking that we're not doing it or uh, we can't hear it when we're just over like our, our it's almost like our brain becomes a computer where we just crash right. in the moment because we're like a deer in headlights right, right. When, if we were just if, if we were to just take a moment and just breathe and try to think clearly even sometimes for me I'll just stop playing and kind of catch where I'm supposed to be and then follow, follow suit from there. So right. that's kind of how I look at it. Got you. No, that's great. Um, Danny on that, Daniel? Um, in terms, a lot of it has to do, with, like Jermaine said, it has to do with time. Um, it has to do with 
uh, developing your chord library. So, um, you know, one thing that really does help, especially for, I'm assuming there's a lot of gospel musicians in here, take a break from gospel music and listen to other things. Listen to jazz, listen to classical, listen to, you know, soft rock, listen to, listen to a whole plethora of things. Um, you'll hear other you'll hear other things that are slowly getting introduced into gospel now that we're not always used to um and then another thing that i found that's helped me um in terms of practicing and making sure that i get my chords right is turning down my instrument and playing underneath the actual material itself mm. Because if you if you sit there practicing and you know you're blaring on top of it, you will never know that you hit the wrong chord. Right. Okay. You will never ever hear that. Right. So um, it's just something that's helped me. Um, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Love it just that. works. That's great. Um, real quick, band. This question came in. What's the most difficult song you ever played? Weighty, let's get you. <laughs> okay. Um, you played a lot of songs. Yeah. Uh, no, this one, this one, you know, kind of took the kick. I think it was like, I think it was two years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Um, I was playing with, uh, with the band T Timeless, and uh, Sam produced a <laughs> Sam Sam produced a song for uh, for Dave Brown, um, "Awesome God." <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you this right now, Sam. Great, great guy, great producer. He, his mindset is just amazing. Right. But naturally, he's gonna think like a bass man. <laughs> right, right. 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 So when he told me, "Yeah, we're playing this song," I'm like, I start to laugh. He's like, "Yeah, man. Yeah, man." <laughs> and man, I tell you this right now, that guy. It's good and it's bad, mm -hmm. right? Because bad because I had to learn it, and I was <laughs> it, I was like pulling whatever hair I have now. <laughs> I, I I was pulling it out, really? but then again, it actually helped me sharpen my ability to play. Right, because right. now I can actually say that this guy produce one of the right. hardest songs that any bass player could think of to wow. try to play back wow. and I was able to do that live right and I was like you know what okay that's a another level that's awesome. of whoever you know that's what I awesome. mean so that that's yeah incredible. that song right there awesome god um Dave Brown check it out yeah okay yeah that's incredible thank you uh Joseph let's get you real quick on that hardest song you've ever played there's not I don't have one that sticks out um but, I mean, a couple would probably be a song by a guy named Mike Stern called Chromosome. Um, okay. It, that's a, it's a guitar song. He's a guitar player. Yep, you know. yep, yep. Um, Technically, like, any of the Greg Howe stuff. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard Greg Howe? I know Greg Okay. Howe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any of the, the, the hammer-ons from nowhere thing, yeah. it's like you need to grow a third hand to do it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. Those are some okay. that just that stick out to me, awesome. but there's not one. Awesome. Uh, Daniel, real quick, uh, hardest song you've ever played? Hardest song? I think it, No Greater Love by Rudolph Stanfield. Okay. It was Ruda. It was Ru Ricky. Ricky Dillard covered it on the No Limit album, but it's it's um, originally one of Rudolph Stanfield's song. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That thing has like I want to say three or four different key changes, and you right. don't even know that you're changing keys. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it makes no sense. Okay. That's awesome. Something to check out, y'all. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Adrian, hardest song you've ever played? This might be actually surprising to some people because, like, I played a lot of gospel in my life. Um, but it would have to be Fancy by an artist named Drake. 
And I had to toil with that for hours because coming from the gospel side, you tend to like shred first before you actually play a groove. That groove is only like groove oriented, but there's like a delayed hi hat because I'm so used to being on beat. There's right. a delayed hi hat. And to play the groove normal, but be a little bit behind with the hi hat. That threw me for a loop, and okay. literally, I toiled with that for days, boss. <laughs> okay. um, that was when we used to play. We don't do that no more. Much sadness. Okay, that's <laughs> okay oh, thank you. You know what? Can you demonstrate, please? Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played it since 2011, but you were going to say something? No, I'm just going to amend my answer after what Adrian said, because those songs were hard technically, but um, to do something like slow and musical... And being very intentional about like where something falls, or you know, so any of the D'Angelo or Dilla stuff will kick my butt <laughs> six ways to Sunday. Like, still doing that. That's if I want to shed, that's the stuff I go to now, like to get feel down. So, yeah, it's like technique, you. and then there's the feel thing. Got you. No, thank you. Um, I could play it real quick. Yeah, uh, sure. And then, and then we'll, we'll get the band to play us out. Dude, I'm trying to remember the song, Boss. That was like his first album. Uh, but like, the hi-hat was... <laughs> so... Uh, that? Why? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. That, that was. It seemed like I did it well there, but trust me, that was hours and hours because wow. my body can't. I'm so used to being on the beat, my body can't just delay it like right, that. Right, right, so, right, right. Yeah, that was oh, tough for me. That was great. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, this has been wonderful. Uh, this has been a really awesome. I'm truly just grateful for each and every one that's here uh, that took time out to be a part of this. Thank you so much. Uh, f to our amazing audience as well for taking time to, to join us tonight. Uh, this has been fantastic. We are definitely planning to get this out, uh, get get the recordings out. And, and, and so, folks, follow us if you're not already on our social media. Uh, we'll let you know when all this, this these sessions are ready to go. Um, but our band does have something else prepared for us, and we're going to be in so for... I have one, I have one question, oh, I have one question. okay, sure. Shamar, go ahead, brother. Hi. Go ahead, go ahead. Like going back to what Jermaine said, uh, as looking at yourself as a franchiser, right, right. It's like, it's like you don't like there are certain people and certain things you don't want to be associated with, right? Right, and right. Like, yeah, and so like, how do you turn down certain things? Right, like saying no to the way. right. That's yeah. ooh, that's actually Without good. Being rude. Right, right. All right, can 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 y'all can y'all help Shamar out a little bit on this one? Uh, G, why don't you go first? Um, I would say just be honest, but be respectful about it. Saying you know because of this, um, I'd rather not take this opportunity. Cause a lot of times we say, oh, you know, I'm not available on that day and whatever. Just be honest. So at least they won't come back around and say, like six months from now, oh, are you available? And you're gonna keep on giving them the same um, untruth. Right. Say. Um, that I made no sense. <laughs> well, Jamaican wise, it makes sense. Um, but yeah, no, just be honest saying, you know, this is where I stand or these are my reasons as to why I don't want to do this. So right. I don't want to waste your time. So respectfully, I'd probably say don't bother calling. Got you. Sure. And, and Jermaine, um, Athel well, just, that sounds kind of rude. <laughs> uh, and Jermaine, Athel just dropped this. He said, what was your hardest song to, to play? Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, apart from Awesome God, that almost like killed me. <laughs> um, Got a Match by Dave Weckl. No, Chick Corea yeah, yeah. and the Electric Band. I still don't have it fast, but <laughs> okay. that's the next song, man. Okay, awesome. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, no, that's great. Um, okay, so band, um, we are getting, they're getting ready to play us out. Uh, again, once again, thank you so much for taking part in this session. Uh, we really appreciate you. As we always do, I'm going to drop a link real quick in the group chat. Uh, if everyone could do me a favor, um, head out over into the group chat. 
uh, when I drop this link and do me a favor, fill out a short, short, short survey. Um, anyone that knows anything about us, uh, we really uh, depend on your feedback, believe it or not. You have the ability to help us to do more things just like this. Um, and it's very simple. Uh, all you got to do is hit a link, uh, let us know, uh, leave some feedback. And again, it goes such a long way in terms of uh, helping us to do these kinds of sessions in the future. So if you can all do me a favor, take five minutes out, take a minute out. It's, it's real short. A couple of questions. Hit that link. Answer. It's all, by the way, it's all anonymous. So no one has to know it was you who said what. It's all anonymous. Hit that link. Give us some feedback. And again, I can't stress it enough. It helps us. It helps us. It helps us to be able to continue to do sessions just like this one. So I'll drop the link there. Um, I think I'm done with the long talk. I'm done talking. I want to hear some music. The band's going to play us out. Thank you, each and every one of you, for, for being a part. And let's hear the band play. All right. So this song that we're about to do is called Delivered by the GEI, or the, technically the Greater Emanuel Institutional Church of God in Christ. Um, Delivered. All right. So enjoy. Copy and hang. So. One, two, one, two, three. 